I recently had the chance to stream the pixel remaster of Final Fantasy IV. This game that came out originally in July 19th, 1991, making me not even a year old as it released, and because of that it stayed firmly outside of my radar, until recently when I was gifted the pixel remaster that came out on Steam in 2021. But now when I'm done with it, it leaves me with a question. Was it worth playing? To decide on that, let's have a little bit of a talk about the game. We have to keep in mind that this is a very old game, and with that it faces a lot of limitations. Still, I found the story to be kind of interesting. You play Cecil, a dark knight of the kingdom of Baron, and the overarching goal of the game is to protect and gather up these elemental crystals from the different kingdoms to save the planet. This is a story with a lot of unexpected twists and turns, many different environments, and a whole slew of colourful characters that also tend to join your party, ranging from a child that can summon massive beasts to an absolutely useless bard. Now, with the max party size of 5, the game actually likes to change out who is with you in the party throughout the story, so your friends come and go at a variety of different points, and to me it felt kind of like every time I had figured out a good strategy, the game decided to switch it up and always seemed to take away my most useful character. Except when they took the bard, because the bard was never useful, so it was a great joy when he went away. The gameplay is generally a top-down overview of the map, either the map of the town or the map of the world. And as you travel around in the overworld or in dungeons, you are randomly faced with fights. You don't see the fight coming, it just appears. Sometimes this is really handy, and sometimes this can be extremely frustrating. But the team actually did a really good job with the environment. You generally are in one of three areas. It's either a town, which is a safe place, the overworld, which is not a safe place, but depending on how you're traveling, it can be pretty safe, and then the dungeons, which are always unsafe, meaning every step could lead to a fight. And these environments are varied, there is a lot of beautiful different visual styles, the towns are interesting, full of interesting characters. Everybody you meet you can actually talk to. Even though they say like just one line, it is still really fun. And for some reason there are so many dancers everywhere. I recommend if you ever go play this game, go find all the dancers because they have some really interesting interactions. But talking to everybody in the village is definitely worth it, because you will come across several different like fun little mini encounters that you would miss otherwise and it's the same with the dungeons there is a lot of dungeons and they're very varied and depending on which dungeon you're in you're gonna get different type of monsters and not every dungeon is mandatory they actually did a really good job with hiding things all over the game optional dungeons a lot of hidden treasures and just hidden little easter eggs here and there making exploration actually really rewarding I was lucky enough to actually have my chat with me so they could point me in the right direction. But I ended up finding a lot of interesting things because they gave me some light nudges and some not so light nudges. And it was definitely worth it. There is so many interesting little places. Now the combat system is a side view of the battlefield with a partial turn based system. So time does pass but your characters also kind of have to wait their turn. They have these bars that fill up, and when the bar is full, they can do something. But if you don't make them do anything, they will just wait there while the enemy pummels you to death. Now this is the first time I'm faced with this combat system. I'm more used to either fully action-based or fully turn-based systems. So having something that kind of looks turn-based, feels kind of turn-based, but still isn't, tended to throw me off. Now I had the option to slow down the combat system, which was really nice. And the chat told me that if I'm in certain menus, the combat stops. But at the same time, it didn't feel like it was stopping. So it could lead to a really frustrating experience at times. Add to this the heavy reliance of elemental weakness and immunities that the game has going on. And the early part of the game was just a really frustrating experience for me. Learning what element worked against another and then coming across enemies that just didn't really make sense to me, it really helped having the chat on my side to tell me if something was just not really following what felt like the rules of the game. 
but I can honestly say, as I started the game, I hated the combat system. It was, in my mind, terrible, I couldn't really get the hang of it, it didn't have a flow I liked, but as I went through the game, I started getting more and more comfortable with it, and started being able to understand the characters that I had control over, allowing me to play with some interesting tactics. And I would say, by the end, I was kinda having fun with it. It's far from my favorite. If given the choice of a combat system, this would probably be one of the last one I would choose. But it's not terrible. And I think if you enjoy this type of combat system, you're gonna have a lot of fun. Because the combat did feel smooth, it did feel kinda fast-paced. For me, it felt like too fast-paced, so I had to slow everything down. It felt like I was always doing something, I was always planning something, I was always reacting to something and making sure everybody stayed alive. And while taking on the final boss, I felt like my heart was going to explode out of my chest because I was so stressed. It was so difficult. A lot of fun, but really difficult. It was also led to it being really satisfying. Managing to get past these really difficult encounters, even though I had to overlevel some of them quite a bit, was nice. And overleveling is something you can do. So if you come across an enemy that just beats you to pulp and you don't know how to deal with it, you can always take a break and just go level your characters. But if you're somebody who has a really tactical brain and likes to have a lot of challenge, you might enjoy playing this game a little bit underleveled, making it like really challenging. It allows for a different type of playstyles depending on just how much you level your characters. And that is really the only difficulty setting, because there is no, there's no easy, normal or hard difficulty in it. It's just how much did you level your characters when you go face the boss. The music of the game is really nice. It has some tunes that get you like really pumped for fighting, which is very fun. And the atmosphere just feels nice. It always felt like the music really fit with what I was doing and the environment. It is very understated and it kind of faded into the background as this sort of just nice background music but always pleasant to listen to. Now as I said before I played the Pixel remaster but there are other remastered versions out there including a 3D remaster with voice acting. But I'm really glad I actually played the Pixel version because it showed the developers amazing creativity to show emotions. There are several times in the game where you have whole scenes with no dialogue, but you still know what's going on. Only with all the characters spinning, jumping, and dragging one another around the area. Because that is about as much as they do. Except the dancers. The dancers have like whole routines, and I cannot express how much you need to see them. The one you see on the screen right now is actually the first one you encounter, which is this dancing girl who has the swimming routine, but there are so many more and they get absolutely massive and insane as the game goes on. I just found the remastered pixel art style be really worth it to play. It was pleasant to watch, it was fun to experience, and I could give everybody the voices I wanted in my head. Though at times I really did wish that it would have been some voice acting. And as I finish the game, I am actually quite ready to jump into the next one, which is probably going to be Final Fantasy VI. And maybe one of the things that won't apply to everyone who plays this game is I had a lot of fun playing it because I've played Final Fantasy XIV and Walker, which does take some inspiration from this game, making it a really fun sort of reverse easter egg hunt to play through it. So was the game worth playing? Well, yes. For me, it definitely was worth playing, but I would probably not recommend it to other people. Except if they either are really fond of these old school RPGs or want to go reverse easter egg hunting because of Final Fantasy XIV. It is not a game type I really like, but I definitely think it's a game that was worth playing once. And that's good enough for me. But if you're still here, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to do all the good YouTube stuff so you can see my future videos. So like, subscribe, notification. You know all that stuff. And in the comments, I would like you to tell me if you played Final Fantasy IV and what your opinion on it was, and if there are any games you would like to see me cover like this in the future.
But for now, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a lovely day.